Yeah, we uh, we lose range. You have a very Austin uh, style shirt on. Well, that was the point. I love. Yeah, I, I, and I complimented it earlier. And where's yours? Uh, I I've been Austin all weekend, and now I'm just thrift store. <laughs> <laughs> It's a classy looking shirt, I can tell. Thank I actually you. did buy this here in Austin. Oh! Yes, I did. Where? True story. I can't remember. Great story. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anyway, we used to be known as the Wii 3. Wii right. 3. We used to take a photo op that was the Wii 3. And I just emailed yesterday to say, why can't we do a Wii 3 photo op again? You, you would join in on that. And then, and then <laughs> He doesn't want to be seen with the hobbits anymore. <laughs> well, all, all the photos, all everybody wanted to do was be winging. We had to pretend like we were winging. <laughs> See, that's a painting that some people like. I know, and I guess, you know, anything for money, I suppose. <laughs> Hi, should we answer Yeah, let's do it. Let's take a question. Why not? Old school. Hello, what's your name? Where are you from? What do you want? <laughs> Yeah. But um, all your cast and people call you Robbie. Is that something you aged out of? No, you know, it's funny. It's a good question. You know, as a, as a kid, my family always called me Robbie. And, uh, and, and, and so different groups of people call me different things. Um, and like I've got a, a, a group of friends that Richard knows that all call me Bob, Bobby. And it's almost as a joke, you know? And Rich has kind of picked up on that, and that's why Rich would call me Bobby sometimes. Or but, Bobo, too. Yeah, yeah. But um, Scott, I, Scott Stevens specifically on that show decided he was going to call me Robbie because he, my brother visited me when I was working on that show. My brother calls me Robbie. And so Stevens was like, Robbie? Okay, Robbie it is. And then that spread now, and all of them call me Robbie. And it's funny, I know like people that my Felicity cast are, are friends with that I don't even know know me as Robbie. You know what I mean? We'll be like, oh, hey, Robbie. Um, so, yeah. He, he knows he's in trouble when I say Robert. Cool. <laughs> right? yeah. What do you think Richard Cove is now? Um, I think he's probably, he's either in politics, you know what I mean? Or um, he's like uh, really down on his luck somewhere. <laughs> but he was a pretty ambitious dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something obsessed with gold. Yeah. But it was really fun to go back and watch that show again and do that podcast. I started watching it last year. It's really good. good. It was a good show. It was such a fun show. Great to be part of it. Thank you so much. Have you seen a rich? Have you seen I have not. Oh, we, uh, J.J. Abrams, it was his first thing that he did, this TV show Felicity that was on in the late 90s, early. Uh, and uh, there's a podcast that you can, on Spotify or wherever, uh, a new Felicity podcast that all of us have been back to talk um, JJ and Matt Reeves and Kerry Russell and Scott Stevens, Scott Foley and all, everybody um, talked about the show. So check it out. It's, it's really cool. And I, I just, I'm on an episode. Just, you might have just said it, but what's the podcast called? <sighs> what's it called? Is it called Dear, Dear Felicity? Okay, it's called Dear Felicity. That makes sense. Alright. And Matt Reeves, the guy who created it. Matt Reeves and JJ were put together. Yeah. Alright. Uh, uh, I'm Miranda. Dream job or dream roles we could all do together. I think we would just do the relaunch, <laughs> reimagine Three's company. Okay. <laughs> well, instead of Jack Kipper living with the two ladies, it's Lucky Ruth living with the two dudes. <laughs> and just like he had to pretend that he was gay in order to get in the building, she had to pretend like she's gay to get into the building. Otherwise, it'd be unfair to us because we don't want to be sought after by Ruth all the way. Yeah, and then we have crazy Mr. Roper. Yeah. Or Mr. Furley or whoever, you know? Yeah, that? yeah. And Larry, our swinging neighbor. Larry, our swinging neighbor. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the new. Do, do you know what Louise's company is? No, but I'm, I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> She's a company because of England. Oh. So Louise's company was a hugely popular. Stop, Scotland, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Scotland is not in the United Kingdom anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the UK, but I, was, I must be wrong. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Most of them are in a tree at that house. <laughs> this 
it's so funny when Andy Murray used to do well, he was Great Britain's Andy Murray, when he didn't do well, he was Scotland's Andy Murray. <laughs> and you have told me well, like I know, I'm very... You do, you know, you do, I just do that. Because a lot of the, uh, people over here will say someone's... Uh, they think Scotland's in England, right. but it's not. English is different, I think. The UK but in the UK, in the UK where you grew up, yeah. um, you have a different reference point. We do, completely. But do you know that TV show at all? No, but I can, I told totally you. Why can I not remember the lead actor? I'm drunk up. Who's the lead actor? John Ritter. John Ritter. I was drawn to play. John Ritter. It's what made John Ritter a star. I completely <coughs> get it. Like, I feel like I must have seen that or some, some it was really a classic. Some really classic. Yeah. And Very I, campy, over the top, but just worked because they, especially because John Ritter was so funny. I would love to do that with you all. That would be super fun. That, you, that would be a super fun thing to do. The other boss that kind of say, go to the Regal Beagle the whole night. Yeah, my pitch is completely different. My pitch is like a reimagining of the West Wing. Where I'm president. <laughs> and you're like Chief Whip. Okay. Yeah. Chief Whip. I'm in charge of all the whips. Yeah. And you're like my arch nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just used to be your Chief Whip. No, no, I don't have a whip then. <laughs> <laughs> like, the love of my life, my partner, mother of my child, thanks for it was like, and I cast you as my whip, and you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not. Yeah, I don't even know you. But wouldn't it be fun to like argue all day at work and go home and be nice? <laughs> <laughs> You're in charge of my foot massages dinner. Yeah. 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 You made the guy who owned Clark Kent. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. But I like the idea that I'm your, I'm your, your masseuse. I think we leave that. Okay, that. I'm your masseuse, <laughs> but then at one point it's will they, won't they, and we finally hook up at the end and of season one. And then it's just one big party. And then we can make out all day. Yes, and then, and then we go to work. And then all of America is united. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good one, Robert. Oh. Uh, shoot. Uh, I mean, I guess um, it's it's a version of both of those shows together, where Ruth. Uh, is present, but she lives with two dudes <laughs> in, the in the White House. One's her chief whip and one's her arch nemesis. And, uh, but they're all rubies. The high Jesus too. And the, and the White House has the landlord, Mr. Roper. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and we surely the White House has a neighbor. That's got to be Larry. Yeah. You know. And we all hang out after work at the Regal Regal. With security detail. With security detail. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, secret <laughs> service. What a great question. Thank you. Hey, you, you mentioned something. You go, in England, when, when this dude's doing great. Andy Murray, tennis tennis player. Player. Scottish tennis player. Ah. Andy Murray. Andy Murray. I wouldn't show the reference here. So it's just a thing that Scot like if Scotland is not England, it's in the right. UK, it's with Great Britain. It's just like an old, it's just an old. Like it's part of the UK, so when he does well, they go, it's they British. British. Yeah. The UK press. Well, it reminds me of a, a, a sign I saw at a diner many years ago. I was in Vancouver, and uh, USA was going to play Canada in hockey, and they were going to screen it in this bar diner, and they had on the board, USA versus Canada football live, and then underneath that it said, the loser keeps fever. Poor multi millionaire Justin, I'm sure you're so yeah, upset. I'm sure you're yeah. <laughs> not. Yeah. Lost, lost, lost. Uh, all right. Hi. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sammy and I'm from Canada. Hey! Hey! hey. hey. Thank you, Excellent timing. And my question is if you could meet your characters from Supernatural, do you think you'd get along? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like you would. <laughs> you and he are kind of alike. Uh, yeah, you I think, think I think there's a lot of. Uh, I mean, look, I, I think uh, yeah, I think we'd be fine. I think I might advise myself to stop fighting my brothers because I always lose. Uh, but yes, yeah, in, in broad stroke terms, I think I would get along. I would be scared of Ruby now. <laughs> Correctly afraid of her. I I wouldn't mess around. What about you? I would be afraid of rowing in love. <laughs> um, well. 
question I take so many turns. I was going to say I would be friends with the early version of Chuck, but that early version of Chuck wasn't friends with anybody. You know, he was a recluse who drank a lot and hung out at his, his house, so I don't think we, he, he would like me. And then when he became God, I mean, it's God. God loves everybody. Until he didn't love everybody. And we wouldn't get along either, so maybe not. Maybe not as much as I love Chuck. I have such a fondness for Chuck and playing Chuck. I think he would bicker. Okay. <laughs> Do you, you see, you said recluse? You said recluse? Yes. What do you say? Recluse. Recluse. No, I can't remember. <laughs> but it's not that. Recluse. Recluse. Do you, what do you say? I said recluse. But I know. Yeah. And that's what I said. Recluse is what I said. You said recluse. Yeah, that's what Richard just said. Oh. Okay. That's not right. What did you say, Richard? Recluse. And I said? Recluse. Oh. It's, oh, it's just like pian. It's just one of those Midwestern things. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go backstage. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm it's, uh, mm. uh, yeah. Anyway. I don't know if I would get along with this, but... And now you're not so sure you get along with it. Oh, Gabriel. You know, I would say that if... You and I, you as God, met Rowena, and me as Gabriel met Rowena. It would be interesting because I think Rowena would make me her personal masseuse or something. <laughs> Very similar to her show. Yeah, it yeah. feels like it. it. Feels that way. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm God's guilty pleasure. <laughs>
the title of the episode, so I, I took that to heart. Like, that gave me information about Rowena, even though it's not about Rowena. And I would imagine her backstory, I would imagine certain things that might have happened, and then as we would go along, without really discussing it, the writers would write in things that tallied with what I might have imagined, which is a sign that you're on the same page, and that, you know, we're all part of a matrix, and that's probably why the show works so well, and why we're all together. Right. Thank you for your question. Very detailed question. Did you? I agree with everything you said. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Next question. All right. I have a first question I've been dying to know. Is it difficult to baby-proof a moat and eight markers on the bashi bashi bashi? Good question. Richard uh, likes to tell the podcast. We, we have a podcast. We do the supernatural that is. And if, you, if, you, if you're not sick of Rob and Rich, you hop on over to our other podcast we do called Kings of Con Podcast. Yeah. Where we just, we just dumb dumbs for an hour. And yeah. Make each other laugh. It's, it's funny. And uh, But one of the things that Richard likes to talk about is the boat that I have in my house. Like, <laughs> I think it's cool. said I had a boat and I don't have a boat, but... That we tell people about it. <laughs> and uh, I mean, what was the other thing? Uh, the boxy ball. Yeah, which I, I don't, also don't have. But You don't, you let the grass grow because you're not playing as much because you're a new father. But Rob, the Benedict Estates are lovely. And the, the boat is, uh, I mean, it's not filled with alligator. It's not like an actual protection. It's more ornamental, I think is how you would say it. Pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, yeah, we're just going to teach, teach her to swim so she can swim yeah. from across it. We actually have her in the pool almost every day. So she's, she's uh, we call it float training. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she's, she's, and, uh, she's just like this in the water. Yeah, no big deal. So she'll be fine in the boat. She'll be fine in the boat. Okay, cool, cool. I'm not great with it. The current takes you. The current takes you. She's under. She's more than a boat. She's She's more than a boat. She's more than what happened to Daddy? Oh, he fell on the boat. <laughs> um, and then the uh, bocce ball court, yeah, she'll, she'll, I don't know. Strong, she'll be like... Yeah, you need to have the staff clean that out so she can start rolling the ball. The staff. Thank you, guys. Frank is part of our staff. <laughs> oh yeah, he's ready. He's ready to start catching those Benedict checks. <laughs> Care less. 
in the world of she literally couldn't care less. It, it's unsettling. How do those compare? I have a theory because this, honestly, it's true that maybe answers are like two things that I like for just for the reasons that they've they've mentioned. But I, you know what? I'm doing? So I'm just too smart. Let's. Yeah. Um, I'm like if if we could record or hear the last couple of minutes after the guest leaves and hear what they think of every guest really, I would love to listen to that. Thank you. Like I think. <laughs> anyway, that's just me. One of the things I really love about the Supernatural Then and Now podcast is that all of our bloopers are, are there at the end. Yeah. But it's fun for Rich. Rich and I, when the new episodes come out, we used to just fast forward to the end and listen to the bloopers and see what made it in. Yeah, that's, that's usually all I listen to is the bloopers. They make me laugh every time. And I have to say, the amount of time that you've both been on stage doing this, it's a sign of your intelligence and. Uh, wit that you have not offended far more people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, no, but seriously, the this most part, we're pretty good at self-editing as we you go. Are, that's what I mean, you do an amazing job, because the point is not to alienate anyone or piss anyone off, it's to entertain, right? We're pretty self-deprecating too, I mean, like, we tend to be the object of each other's joke. Uh, or ourselves, you know what I mean? More so than... Or just me. Or just me. <laughs> we're, we're, we're pretty raw deprecating. Yeah, we're raw deprecating. Hello. Hi. 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 Hey! I'm from Nashville. It's a good statement. I know. Um, I asked this question of... For Lisa, Sam, Tim, and Bree yesterday, but um, it's for all of you to answer. But thinking of Rob role as Splinter in The Boys, um, how do you prepare for a role when you know that you have to um, expose yourself physically, mentally, or emotionally? Robert, <laughs> you stop eating and you work out as much as you can. Um, yeah, you know, I when I was presented with that role, um, I knew right away, right up top, what it was going to be, that there was a community, that there was that one scene, uh, and I, which scene? I thought, I thought it was funny, you know, it made me laugh, and I thought, you know what, this is going to be a lot of firsts for me, and like, as an actor, I'm going to have to be, you know, it's going to, it's going to be a great exercise, and the exercise is to be very vulnerable and own it. And, and that includes dealing with people's reactions to it, you know, because um, we're all sensitive artists. And so when people say like, oh my God, how did you do that? I can't look you in the face anymore. And you have to be like, wear it, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was me, I did that and I'm proud of it, you know? Um, so for me, mentally is the biggest thing is just sort of mentally preparing myself, which I did a lot before I did it. And then by the time I got on set, you know, it just, it was what it was and you know, it was insane, but it was the mental preparation. Okay, I'm gonna be, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not a, like a young kid in my early 20s, you know, I'm in my early 50s, and so it was, like, it was a big sort of challenge to sort of get over that in my head, and that's why I wanted to do it, because I was really challenging myself, and uh, as an actor, you know, this is one of the things I love about acting, is like, you know, you get to sort of go into the recesses and discover things about yourself, you know, and, that, and that's what I was doing, so. Um, well, this as well because the actual technical difficulty of doing all the fights and being 15 different characters, like the feedback he was getting from Kripke and from the people he worked with was like, none of them had done anything like it before and were just full of admiration of how he did it and how well he did it. And I said to him, you know, people are naked in French movies, like it's art, like who gives a shit? So, um, I was naked on stage once. In a play, and uh, I prepared by doing Bikram yoga every day for a month. <laughs> but just to try and feel like I looked as comfortable as I, uh, to feel as comfortable as I could feel. I'm so bummed I didn't know you then. <laughs> I would have seen the play as to support you. I would have gone into stage management. So. <laughs> hey, Rich, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing the curtains. <laughs> did, you, did you have to fly from? No, that was your uh, joke. No, no, it's not funny because I watched Lady like, thinking the same thing. So your good friend Robin from yeah. my my so three. I live with two people all through college. They're um, married now and godmother to their children. A girl called Joe and a boy called Joe. 
and Noah Joe and Molly Joe are Joe and Joe. Joe and Joe. And Joe. Oh, I'm the only non Joe in the relationship. <laughs> and um, Joe Girl had to fly across the stage in Tom Stoppard's play naked on a trapeze, and Robert would catch her every night. And he was such a gentleman, she felt you know, so comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just took me in my head, the exact same thing. Um, I had nobody to help me. Uh, I had to walk off stage on my own. There was doors outside the stage. I had to kick the door. And nobody paged the door for me. Nobody was standing without a dressing gown. I was really angry after the dress rehearsal. And, um, Wouldn't that just be called a rehearsal? A rehearsal. I mean, it was really great. Undress rehearsal. Undress rehearsal. And what it, what it showed me was that the people around about me were more uncomfortable than I was dealing with it. And actually, there's something like you're in a white hot spotlight, which is probably not flattering at all. Um, and for me, it was extremely liberating. Um, and it was over. It was done. And nobody died. Um, nobody's eyes fell out. It was all fine. I'm actually, some people's eyes fell out watching The Boys, but. <laughs> That's true. Um, you, yeah. you you were naked in uh, our series Kings of Con. I was, but I was thinking more Open Water 2. I had to do a bunch of unity in Open Water 2. Nice. Which was interesting because we, we we were really naked in that we were wearing a sock. But like all the so Open Water 2, everybody falls off a boat and then tries to figure out how to get back on the boat. And one of the things that happens is everybody we tie our swimsuits together trying to make a rope. So that means like 20 minutes into the movie. We're just nude. And the gals, they wore uh, the flesh colored bikini bottoms. And so that I don't think that was overly exposed. One girl wore a, had a light vest, so she was covered up. And the other ones, they wore pasties. You know, it was under the water. So it was, there was no like glory shots of nudity, but you were, it was still, you still felt exposed. All the dudes just wore socks. And one of my favorite parts. In the water? Yeah, because there were some shots. Uh, Underneath. Like, we, we didn't have to get out of the water. They, soggy? They just thought it was a, uh, a nice thing to do for us, so we didn't feel... Right. Uh, but, the, but the funny part is that the wardrobe department didn't exactly know how to... I mean, it's an indie movie. So they came to us with a, each guy, they wanted at our costume fitting. <laughs> and a hanger. And on it was an array of socks. You had to pick your own sock. It started with what looked like LeBron James stocking. <laughs> and uh, just unfurled down the row, you know. And ended in a preemie baby sock. <laughs> and they had like, 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 like little kids for Christmas morning, just a row of stockings. And you had to take from, from there. So it was very, you know, it was, uh, it was humbling. It was very, very yeah, yeah. It was baby sock. You know how many takes this long one? And then just for shits and giggles, give me this little one. Because they did say that they brought him in, and I go, I say, okay, uh, I want to thank you for giving that, that ridiculous option. I just, as a guy, appreciate you even entertaining the idea that any of us would kill that sock. But I'm going to go here, go over here, grab my sock. Um, and it was funny because, and you mentioned this too about your episode. In the beginning, it was very, uh, okay, we're wearing our our vanity robes and they get the water and you're like, throw your robe down to get the water. And, you know, you just, they, there are a lot of love shots that showed your buttocks, so that's why they couldn't have anything wrapping around you for the dudes. But it was, the whole crew was European. They thought we were all dumb Americans who even cared, but we were, you know, all more, you know, a little more sensitive to it. That was day one. By day four, or not deep down, but you know, week, week two, you're over there making an espresso, totally new. Like, Shirley, can you give me your coffee? <laughs> and, uh, and nobody cared. That's like, no, nobody, nobody cared. It was like, you're like, where's your band in your room? Oh shit, I lost that a week ago. <laughs> what are we doing? What's the, uh, what's the shot, boss? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it the press is coming today? Okay, let me put that in front. That's exactly the way I'm avoiding. I had to, these two guys came in my dressing room every day and, and put on my prosthetic penis. Uh, it was an hour process. To put on themselves or on you? Uh, and, then, and then another one to take it off was another hour. And at first it was really awkward. And then by the end I was like, how was your weekend, guys? <laughs> um, but I was going to say one other quick thing that um, now, fortunately, 
sets are required to have an intimacy coordinator on safe the sex scenes for nudity, anything. So I yeah, it was the main purposes. Um, but in this case, I had an intimacy coordinator for the boys um, because of all the, the nudity, and, and I needed it. I was really glad I had that advocate in my corner who could answer questions about anything that felt uncomfortable. You know. Did any of you have a thing though? I said yes to the contract, and afterwards I was like, what did I do? <laughs> you know, like, you just like, I'll be fine. Then you got to do it, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of knew what I'd signed up for. I mean, there were, I guess there were days where I was like, Okay, yeah, I mean, I came in, I looked at my dressing room, and my, my, you know, they usually, they hang your wardrobe in the closet. Mine was this, like, teeny little, you know, G-string. Now, just a nude colored G-string and a robe. Like, that's it. You know, that was all I was going to have to choose from. Uh, thank you for the question. Thank you. Where are you? Uh, there's a baby here that's born with the Indies Margaret, but are you in the room? Are you asking the baby to speak <laughs> Was anyone here born January 12th this year? I don't know if they're here. Are they here? No. Oh, okay, I just want to say hi. Okay, hello. Hello. Um, my question is, if you, uh, knowing what you know now, if you could go back and talk to your 24-year-old self, what would you say and would you do anything different? 24? Are you 24? Is that why we're... Yes. Okay. Um, I would say worry less, have more fun. And I don't mean like party fun and woo woo woo. I mean like I, I just put myself under the pressure cooker of trying to have a career so much that I think I skipped friends' weddings and didn't it, it didn't enjoy myself in a certain way because I let the industry dictate my choices more than I dictated my own choices. And if I could go back, I would release that stress. I would still pick the same career, I would still pursue it with the same passion. But I wouldn't be a slave to it. And that's what I would tell myself. Yeah, I, think, I, think, I think the same, same about it. I took life very seriously. I, I took acting very seriously. Um, I got married early. I was married by then. I, uh, I was really just like, yeah, I'm just going to do it. You know, with this so gung ho on being an actor and, and doing, being successful if I could. Uh, but yeah, I'd take more time to sort of. I told myself earlier today, because there was a lovely lady came up to my stand in the, in the vendor room with her son, and she was really laughing, I don't know if she's here just now, and I just thought, she was so happy, and her son had a good sense of humor too, and I, I, I gave myself the note today, just laugh more, <laughs> just be silly more, um, and yeah, and, yeah, any small thing that you enjoy, just do more of that, don't worry about the stuff so much. Um, but I 
and then she what? Game of Thrones. And I it should be. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I why am I not in the Lord of the Rings something? Like, surely to God? No? So can I pick two? Oh, you don't agree. I do agree. <laughs> Acting like I'm casting. I know. <laughs> Why am I not in that? No. Um, uh, you know what I'm gonna say, Harry Potter. Um, I think it would be. Dumbledore. Yeah, Harry Potter fan here. Um, I, I think. <laughs> You're in the of the house. Yeah, it's not a thing. Um, I think that if I were in Harry Potter. I'd be one of the kids, or I guess maybe I'd be a teacher. But I'd be. You're a weird kid. You like, didn't fail 40 years ago. <laughs> See, that's the thing in my head. I am Harry Potter's age. Oh, really? um, right, so I'd be one of the professors. That's cool, because they all got power. So that would be cool to have the power. Yeah. And less likely to be eaten by a dragon or something right. in Game of Thrones. You know, uh, so yeah, I think it'd be fun to teach a class. I want to be in that school. Yeah. I want to teach one of those classes. I don't know what I teach. It would be cool. Something. Do I give you one of the girls? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But if I were a teacher, like, what would I teach? Like, something like, this is how you run away quickly. Like, Ooh, music. <laughs> All of it. Thank you for your question. Thank you. She came all the way from China to ask. Yeah, amazing. Where are you from? I'm Heather from Colorado, but I'm actually going to Scotland tomorrow. Ooh. Hey, where are you going? Uh, Oban? Oban. Oh, you're yeah. good whiskey there. Yeah. 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 My friend's getting married, so I don't oh. know what they're doing. I just want to play with another cow. Oban? Oban. Yeah. It's a small island. It is just Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, my question. Rich, I was at one of these a couple of years ago, and you told a story about a visit to Australia and Rob having an issue with one of the towns there. Oh, Rob, not like a bird? Can you just tell it again? Well, I'm going to let Rob tell that story because Rob tells it really well. There's a, the funny thing is, there's a pair from Scotland. <laughs> there is a pair from Scotland. He likes birds. Is there original pair? Okay. Uh, OG pair? Great, starting to fly from Australia on the stage. Thank you. <laughs> Really quickly, uh, uh, we were in Australia 10 years ago, and uh, someone there uh, came up to us our first night at the convention in tears because she loved Richard Spain. She, I, side note, no love for me. There was no, my God, it's Richard Rob. It was just like, Richard Spain. And he's like, you know Rob Bennett? And she's like, not really, but Richard Spain. Uh, and, she, and he's like, um, she was literally crying for me and Richard, and he was like, it's okay, uh, where, 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 where are you from? She's like, Perth. And without missing me, he goes, oh, Rob hates Perth. <laughs> well, I will tell you right now, I've never been to Perth. I don't, uh, I don't hate places, I only hate people, I'm not a person of hate. Um, and yet, this woman looked at me with tears in her eyes and said, we take offense to that. <laughs> well, what do you? I mean, and then, as it went along, the 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 snowball the, the snowball he created turned into a, a full-on avalanche, and it got around. He kept, you know, I told this story. We told the story at a panel that weekend, and afterwards, people come up and be like, you know, it's really not so bad. You should you should visit. Like, no, that's the point. I don't hate Perth. And the more I said I don't hate Perth, the more I hated Perth. But I don't hate Perth. So if you Google Rob hates, it fills in Perth. And people, their t-shirts you can buy that says Rob and Perth. Or like a picture of Perth on a map and me going, I know, well, you're like, you're kind of shrugging. <laughs> All of, and then he, and he, his, as my friend, I was like, Rich, make it stop. I was like, wish you could make it stop. Can't make it stop, but build it, there it goes. I mean, I did start it, I started it, but there it goes, and now I don't, I don't know anymore. I can't, oh, well, there it is. Uh, out of reach. There it goes. We, we, I mean, hindsight, you know what I'm saying? But here we are. By the way, you know what they call people who live in Perth? Perfect. <laughs> so if someone goes missing, they're missing perfect. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, okay, one more. Hello. Hello. I can't really get the image out of a splinter as a ghost running around the hall of Hogwarts. Uh, yeah. well, it's 
particularly good for you because there's not warts in Hogwarts. Jess is talking mongoose is my wife's favorite cryptid, so I was curious how you guys, if you have a favorite cryptid. What's a cryptid? I don't know what that is. Oh, right, right, right. It's like a oh. like or something. Oh. Like a Loch Ness monster. Oh. Yeah. Nessie. I've got a picture of Nessie in my hands on the wall. Nessie's probably you. Bigfoot. Bigfoot I really freaked me out when I was a kid. I really believe. Still kind of game. <laughs> yeah. Well, I... The picture, man. Yeah, I, I gotta say Bigfoot because Steve Austin fought Bigfoot in the six million dollar win. So I forgot that he turned into acting. Yeah. Bigfoot. And Jack Toffee Mongoose is real. I think we established in the movie, so... Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your Thank you. Thank uh, you. Rob, you have a lot of swing uh, survival kit. Yes, I do. Out. I uh, so what I have here is a bag, loud swing bag, uh, with inside is uh, the new vinyl album. The new album on vinyl. Uh, there's a t-shirt in here. There is a bumper sticker. And, of course, a kazoo. How many of you saw that show last night? How many of you see that show on Monday night? Right, and so uh, what we're doing, we're just we're beginning this way with some lucky person, right? And, and I just have to pick. All right, Ruth, yeah. you, Ruth, you have to pick a person that's going to get the loudest way. Somebody wants. Somebody if you don't own that vinyl. If you don't own that vinyl. Gonna Here comes Ruth. Ruth is going to find the right person. The put, put your hand in the air if you don't have the album. Yes. You don't have the uh, album. Feelings and such are brand new. I'm going to go towards. I'm going to go further. And We're going further, further in. She's going further in, further in everybody. Further in. Further in. Further in. Further in. Further in. Further in. Further All right, well, you're coming up on stage. I don't know if you're allowed to sleep in, but you are now. <laughs> what do you think? Do you, do you know Loud and Sway in the band? Okay, you do. Uh, we're so happy. Do you want to present? Yes, I'm going to present the present. <laughs> Thank you for, for being here. This is the band. It's all for you. Oh, <laughs> And he asked me to pass along this message, uh, which is legit. I'm not making it up. Um, so Random Acts is running a fundraiser in honor of his birthday through August 31st. Uh, and 100% of all the funds will facilitate acts of kindness. So far, there have been $12,500 raised, which is amazing. Um, we're going to throw something on the screen, I think you guys are, so you can, uh, well, there he is. And by the way, somebody, uh, a random donor will give a signed SPN tape ball that's being given away. Yeah. If you donate, if you donate to this, you're oh, going to eating the ball. Yeah, you're entering that, and I think they're going to throw, uh, the tape, the tape ball for anyone who doesn't know, when we are on set, stand on marks on the floor and Robin, the props master, took every single mark that Janet, Jensen and Misha, any of us stood on and rolled them together into a ball. So you basically have a season's tape in a ball. Like, they're so rare. There's only a couple of them in existence in the world. Yeah. They're awesome. They're awesome. I wish I had one. So I don't know, I think they might throw up a QR code that you can... Oh, look at this. Signed by everybody. They might be throwing up a QR code so you can use your phone to, uh, to donate, but... That's the QR code, guys. One, one random donor will get assigned to SP and Take Ball. Five donors will get signed scripts. Um, so donate or make a page and get friends to donate or both. You can go to Random Act social media to learn more. 
Um, and also, I should say, my wife, the Machete, is on the board of directors of this organization. Yes. Yep. So, we are big fans of each other. Yeah. Jason Hayes is, a, is the board member of Rainbow Man. Oh, I did not know that. She's not all, she's not all margaritas, you know what I mean? She had a class up to join. She really did. Um, so you got the photos on the screen, you got the uh, QR code. Here's his goal. This is his birthday wish. He wants to get that total up to $50,000. Yeah. You've got $12,500 in under 24 hours. I think by the 31st of August, we can get to $50,000. 50, yeah. 50, so 50 to 50. Give a dollar, give whatever you can, share the, the QR code and the Random Act social media with your friends. Get people to donate. Uh, nobody gives back more than Misha Collins. Yeah. And even in our celebration of his turning 50, the best way to give him our appreciation is to help him give to other people. So, Ruth and I are going to donate. We just talked about it. You donate um, your salary, Rich, which oh, I appreciate you. Like I said, don't need a dollar. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> no, uh, we're going to do it. We're going to donate for Misha. And the, and the more you can spread the news outside this room so we can raise that $50,000 in honor of his 50th birthday. That would be fantastic and what a gift to Misha so he can continue doing great things for other people like the selfless person that he is. Thank you guys. So, it is now time. Well, no, be here and do this intro with us. We're just okay. here. We're going to bring on the next few people. Who is it? Well, it's a surprise to everyone, and that's why they're just screaming here. Now, I think this is a rare, Austin, this is a rare yeah, occasion. Yeah. We don't get this right off. I don't even know what's happening. We don't.